Welcome back to the Kennedy Dynasty Podcast. I'm your host, Allison, and I'm back. Did you miss me? I feel like this was the longest time I haven't recorded. It's been, I think, a little over a month, which is pretty wild. I took a little break because first I went on vacation with my family, and then it's just been a wild, crazy busy time in my life, which you can follow along at Kennedy Dynasty on Instagram and kind of keep up with what I've been doing. So if you're interested in my life, then go check it out there. But anyway, I am back. I want to talk to you a little bit about my recording schedule for the next, I think, couple months. It's going to be probably a bi-weekly basis. And then I also want to insert a little bit of prior. So maybe like a, you know, bi-weekly and then with a little sprinkle of Ryan when I can get him on here. I know you all miss him. I've gotten some messages. I miss him too. I feel like I've not talked to him enough lately. We have both had a crazy busy summer and I need to catch him before he goes back to teaching. So anyway, um, we will have some prior in here soon. We've chatted about getting together for an episode, so we'll make it happen. But as far as like my normal episodes, Anya and I have some really good topics lined up and I'm really excited to share them with you guys over the next few weeks. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss when an episode drops. And yeah, just uh, I'm, I'm glad to be back behind the mic. Another thing I want to address, I am getting countless messages to please do an episode on or cover the news of Bobby Kennedy Jr. running for president. So the reason I have not addressed this is because I do not get political on this podcast, and that's about the most political you can possibly get. I am a history-based podcast solely. I try to focus on the past here because I don't want to cause division, I guess, from my audience. I don't ever share my own political opinions or anything like that. So if you haven't heard me address it, that's why, because I don't want to lean towards one, one way or the other and make people be like, what the heck, you've never done that before. So that is why I have not done that. I will, as we go on, like report on facts of his campaign or his race or, you know, all that kind of stuff I will do. But the reason I haven't like completely gone into a huge thing about him is because I just, I mean, that's literally so political, obviously. But I mean, the fact of the matter is there is a Kennedy running for president right now. And this is a Kennedy based podcast. So I will cover some things, but not I'm not gonna be like, I agree with this. I don't agree with this or whatever. So there is your answer to that question for all the DMs about it. I've got a fun summary little episode lined up today, so let's get started. First, with our In the News segment. Big uh, news story of the past seven days. Via CNN, the White House has officially confirmed that the National Archives had concluded a review of the JFK assassination files. So on the instructions of President Biden, 99% of the JFK assassination files have now been made available to the public, excluding those which have not been released because of, in quote, the strongest possible reasons counsel otherwise. So it's happened. 99% of the assassination files are now available and uh, it's been a long time coming. So now for our recommendation segment course, then we would uh, recommend it. This week, I'm going to recommend to go along with our topic, a very popular book at this point in time, and I got a review copy of it, and it is phenomenal. So it is called White House by the Sea, A Century of the Kennedys at Hyannisport by Kate Story. Check it out. I'll put a link in the description of this episode. And finally, because it was just 4th of July, which I hope you all had a wonderful 4th of July for all of my American listeners. We had a lot of fun. We ate a lot of food. We watched the kids play and jump on the trampoline and uh, swim in the pool. And we all sat around and talked and it was just about the most, oh, and then watch fireworks, of course. So it was about the most 4th of July you can 4th of July, which was great. So in honor of that, here's a clip of President Kennedy's speech at Independence Hall on July 4th, 1962. On this 4th day of July, 1962, we who are gathered at this same hall, entrusted with the fate and future of our states and nation declare now our vow to do our part to lift the weights from the shoulders of all to join other men and nations in preserving both peace and freedom and to regard any threat to the peace or freedom of one as a threat to the peace and freedom of all all right, let's get into the episode. Today, we're going to talk about Jackie Kennedy's first trip to the Kennedy compound, which is where those iconic Life magazine photos come from of them on the boat and their engagement and Kennedy goes a courting. 
I felt like it was just a summer aesthetic, which by the way, if you're not following me, I know I've already plugged it, but I'm going to do it again at Kennedy Dynasty on Instagram. The whole vibe is very summery over there right now. I've posted a reel or two of Kennedy summer aesthetic. It just, it's a good time over there. So make sure to check it out. Our sources today, though, are Vanity Fair, Travel and Leisure, Architectural Digest, Town and Country Mag, JFK Hyannis Museum, Politico, and that is just about it. So here we go. As we know, and we have talked about before, but I'm going to just refresh your memory, the Kennedy Compound is a six-acre waterfront residency in Hyannisport, which incorporated three properties, the first of which was purchased by Joe and Rose in 1928. The property has a swimming pool and a tennis court, and it was described by Ted Kennedy as being the family's epicenter. By the way, Carrie Kennedy just posted a big group family photo from 4th of July weekend at the compound. Go check it out. But let's talk about Jackie. Jackie's first visit to the Kennedy compound took place in the summer of 1953. And during the visit, Jackie, who had just become engaged to the then senator for Massachusetts, was introduced to the Kennedy family ahead of their September wedding. Jack and Jackie's engagement photos were shot by Hi Peskin, which I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, a photographer for Sports Illustrated, Life Magazine's sister publication, who Jack had met at LaGuardia Airport while waiting for Jackie, with whom he had traveled to Cape Cod for the 4th of July. Peskin followed Jack and Jackie around Cape Cod together and individually, capturing both candid photos and portraits for which Jack wore a suit and Jackie wore a tailored A-line dress, pearls, and a brooch. But one of the more informal shots was used for the cover of Life Magazine's July 20th, 1953 issue, which is what I talked about earlier. This was the photograph that was accompanied by the headline, Senator Kennedy Goes a Courtin', which I love it. I almost want to like, I used to have it framed somewhere, but I almost want to put it, I don't know, like have a poster of it somewhere in my house. I love that. I love that photo so much. I don't know where I would put it, but I'm sure I'll find a place. So it was in this photo that Jack and Jackie are sitting smiling on the Kennedy family sailboat. Other pictures shot by this photographer capture the couple walking along the beach and observing the family photographs and reading. Peskin and the Life magazine reporter who accompanied him were not the only media personnel who were invited to capture the newly engaged couple, though. Jack and Jackie's engagement was a huge story, particularly because the Saturday Evening Post had published an article entitled The Senate's Gay Young Bachelor just weeks before, and they had been flooded with interview requests. So an informal photo shoot was hosted in the big house of the Kennedy compound. And this was a really good thing because Jackie's first visit to the Kennedy compound helped her to successfully integrate into the family. She was extremely well-liked by Rose. She made an effort to play football and go sailing with the Kennedy brothers, and she spent time getting to know her new sisters-in-law. In a letter which Jackie wrote to Rose thanking her for her hospitality, she acknowledged the love and loyalty which epitomized the Kennedy family. And as many of us know, the Kennedy compound was regularly frequented by Jack and Jackie throughout the duration of their marriage. While visiting during the summer, Jackie would spend her time reading, painting, water skiing, and cruising on the Marlin, which is the Kennedy family's boat. She rarely ventured out beyond the compound during her time in Hyannisport, though, which I actually understand. I mean, if you have a whole compound and you have all the things you could possibly need, why would you leave? Now, I have done a whole episode on the Kennedy compound, so if you're interested, go back and listen to it. But I will refresh your memory with this. The main house of the Kennedy compound was occupied by Rose Kennedy until her death in 1995, and then by Ted Kennedy until his death in 2009, before it was donated to the Edward M. Kennedy Institute by Victoria Kennedy which was Ted's wife at the time. Ethel Kennedy still resides in a home which she shared with Bobby. Now, these collective reasons are why the compound is not accessible to the public, but the JFK Hyannis Museum allows visitors to explore the history of the Kennedy compound and is visited by approximately 70,000 people per year. The main house is also being preserved for charitable use and will eventually be open to the general public, which I cannot wait for that day. That will be wonderful. I'll put a link to the JFK Highness Museum's website in the description of this episode so you can check it out and maybe pay them a visit. I have been to Hyannisport. It is beautiful. I've told you guys before, but I'll say it again. I was there on July 3rd and flew out, which was the biggest mistake. This was a few years ago. I don't know. This was four or five years ago. And we flew out and did not stay for 4th of July, which was super dumb because the whole family literally, of course, had their like parade on their golf carts. Ethel was there. The whole shindig like the next day. So... I still kick myself about it, as you can tell. Maybe one day I'll go back. But it's beautiful. Go get some chowder. All right, that's all I've got for you today. A fairly short episode, but I will tell you because I am moving bi-weekly at this point from here on out, and that'll kind of be our schedule for a bit. Our episodes will be a little longer, and um, so that'll be fun for a season, a little out of my normal format. This one was just a shorty one, though, but I thought it was a cool summer one. 
As I said before, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss an episode of the podcast. If you love it, if you love the show, if you like me, all right, do me a favor and please leave me a positive written review if you like the show on Apple Podcasts and rate it five stars, of course. If you don't like the show, please don't leave a review. Just unsubscribe or don't listen. But if you like it, the written positive reviews help the show so, so much for other people to find it. It's like, uh, I heard another podcaster say it's like tipping your waiter. So give me a little tip. That'd be awesome. If you haven't lately, check out that merch shop, everybody. I know I've been saying it, and I know that's probably really annoying that I'm going to say it again. I promise you I'm working on new designs. I'm going to have some new ones come out. But in the meantime, the Hyannis Port sweatshirt is perfect for this episode, one. But two, it's got a very vintage feel to it. I think I've got it in t-shirt form, too, if you're not feeling sweatshirts for the summer, even though I wear sweatshirts in the summer because I just do. I'm cold all the time, I guess. Anyway, I'll put a direct link to that top and go check it out. It's super cool. You'll love it. And it supports the show as well. So I really appreciate you guys ordering merch. Every time I see a new order, it just brings joy to my heart. That's all I've got. Again, follow me on Instagram. Keep up with what's going on. A lot of it to do with the documentary I'm working on about Clint Hill's life, agent number nine. And I think you guys would like to keep up with that process probably. So do it. And I will talk to you guys soon. Come on and vote for Kennedy. Vote for Kennedy. Keep America strong. Just keep throwing up. Can I be? Just keep throwing up.